Welcome back to Worship Guitar Lab. Today we're going to be doing a walkthrough of my newly updated pedal board for 2021. Uh, I'm really excited about this one. There's been a bunch of changes, a bunch of new things that went into this pedal board. So I uh, hope you enjoy this and uh, let's get started. First, let's quickly go through the design process on this. So I started off by taking all my pedals, laying them all out on a desk and just sort of uh, starting to begin to play with layout both in the physical layout and the signal flow that I'm gonna want. So kind of took a little time, laid them all out, um, measured how big I'm gonna need this board to be. Um, I quickly realized that uh, there was a couple pedals that I would never need to touch, uh, namely the Iridium and my compressor, I found, and the power supply. I found that those items I could potentially put on a second level underneath uh, so that I wouldn't have to use that real estate for my board. So I did a bunch of research and found two different pedal board makers that looked like they had the multi-level pedal boards that I was looking for. Uh, one was Vertex FX and one was Creation Boards. So uh, I took a look at the both of them, kind of weighed out the differences. They looked about the same. Um, I was looking for availability. Uh, Vertex FX looked really nice. However, I couldn't really find uh, availability anywhere. And then I did stumble upon uh, Sweetwater. Uh, Sweetwater had all of them in stock. Um, I spoke with a representative there. They were amazingly helpful. Highly recommend them. This isn't a sponsorship by them, but I've always had amazing experience with them. Once it arrived, I just started doing a kind of a rough sketch layout. I just took the pedals and just sort of set them around on the board. Uh, got a sense for which pedals would be best to put underneath the layer, this kind of the top shelf, uh, and which ones would be best to keep visible and most accessible. You know, based on which ones I use the most, uh, versus the ones which I don't really need to touch that often. And here is the final result. All right, here we are at the final result. Um, man, this has been a process, but I'm really happy with the results. Um, just going to kind of go through and talk about the signal chain and just what uh, decisions I made or what maybe a little bit of why I made them. Uh, so here obviously is my input. First in the chain is a volume pedal. Um, the nice thing about the Vertex board is it had this space over here available that's aside from this shelf. Uh, so that's a perfect spot for a big volume pedal. Uh, speaking of big volume pedals, I would like to get a small volume pedal. They make the little half size ones now, which looks really cool. And I definitely want to do that because that would save some space. Maybe even make a little bit of room for another pedal here. Although I need to chill because it's looking good and I like the way it sounds. So uh, from there, we're going into the tuner. Uh, and as you can see, it's like really clean. I try to spend a lot of time making this look really clean. Uh, you know, not a bunch of wires hanging all over the place. Um, and here we just chain from one to the next. Um, we got our Deep Six compressor, which is a huge uh, semi-recent addition to the board. And honestly, it's sort of the secret sauce of why I love my tones so much right now. Uh, especially playing with a Strat for the single coils, this compressor really helps sustain quite a bit. Uh, of course, the overdrive, the good old Timmy, uh, that thing's just great um, for a general overdrive. Nice transparent sound. Um, although currently I'm using it for a little bit uh, extra fu extra dirt sound. So um, in combination with the protein, uh, you've probably may or may not have seen uh, my video on the protein. Um, I absolutely love this thing. Uh, at the end here, I'm going to do a playthrough of these and a proper playthrough uh, before I was getting used to filming for YouTube and left some of my. Um, camera audio on, so a couple of you have mentioned that the uh, audio quality on the Protein uh, walkthrough wasn't the best in the world. I was sort of new to it, so uh, give me a little grace there. Um, at the output of the Protein, uh, I had to make custom cable to come from here over to here, so I just soldered my own. Um, I left a little bit of slack in it just in case I add an extra pedal here. Uh, I think the only thing I may add here is like a, uh, a stereo um, tremolo pedal that could be a really great addition um, but this guy comes over here and connects up here to the boss digital delay 
the DD500. Um, that is feeding into the Big Sky Reverb. I played around with having these two switched. Um, I didn't really love having it, the reverb going into delay. It sounded a little strange. It was a little cleaner this way. Um, and if you have any comments and, or anything, please let me know of things that I might be able to try because I'm always open to input on this stuff. It's usually just trial and error. Uh, and then after the big sky is this new addition, the microcosm. This thing is kind of weird and incredible. Uh, it's like, I'm pretty sure it's a piece of UFO technology, but um, it is incredible. And I've actually, at first I was like, this is fun, might be good for songwriting, um, but I wasn't quite sure if I'd be able to use it in an actual live service. Um, however, I've come up with a couple of presets that I'll walk through here in just a sec and show you that when you combine this with some really big swell reverbs, it actually adds some really amazing textures. So, um, as you can see here at the top, um, I think you can see, uh, I'm going stereo out of the, the delay into the reverb, out of the reverb, into uh, one of these um, kind of, I guess, step down. There's an official name for it. I can't remember what it is offhand, uh, but it goes from stereo into a single input. It's for pedals that don't have stereo inputs. They just have a single, um, like a TRS cable, I think it is. Um, so from there, we go stereo out of the microcosm into the iridium. So these are sort of the, uh, once again, these, these TRS cables to step the stereo down to the single input. Um, had to do that for both uh, the big sky and then for the final part of the chain from the microcosm uh, into the iridium. So the iridium, I know it has this favorites channel. I don't, I tried messing with it for a little while. I didn't really find that I liked it all that much. Wasn't really using it. So I just have all these settings sort of locked down. This just stays on at all times. Uh, and then I'm running stereo out of the iridium into the system. Uh, in our system at uh, church for a live service, I don't play stereo through the system. Um, I run, the front of house runs that up the center. Uh, but in my in-ear monitor mix, I am running stereo and I can't even express enough how amazing of a difference that has made. Running stereo into your in-ear mix uh, is incredible. It just really brings back that room sense. I used to always play with one ear, one ear out because it drove me crazy. It sounded like I was playing to an AM radio. Uh, however, now that I have stereo in my ears, I'm getting all of this stereo. I'm getting stereo delay, I'm getting stereo reverb, and the microcosms in stereo. So it has made a giant difference. So now I love running with both ears and it makes, uh, makes an incredible feel for the room. So um, that about covers the basics. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and give a little playthrough action here. All right, here we are for a quick playthrough. Uh, I'm not gonna make this too long, just cover some of the basics, just to show you around a little bit. Uh, the main things I'm using in general are delay, reverb, obviously once in a while drive. Um, and then I did find some really cool uses for this. Um, I thought it was gonna initially just be kind of a weird pedal that I might use for recording or something, but um, yeah, I wanted to show you a little bit of that. Uh, this is just my stage one reverb. As you can hear, just kind of, just a little bit of a wash. I do have a good amount of pre-delay on that so that the reverb doesn't cover up my sound. Typically have that on, especially during parts that aren't too busy. Uh, this is sort of the second level. As you can see, that adds quite a bit of sustain. Uh, also, in uh, speaking of sustain, this Deep Six is incredible. Uh, if you don't use a compressor pedal, just check this out. Here's a really quiet playing. I'll play as quiet as I can. And then check this out. It really brings, I don't know if you can tell that, but it brings the volume of the quiet notes up quite a bit, and then just tampers down the loud ones just a tiny bit. Uh, and you can blend in your drag signal with it. So it's a great addition. It's sort of the secret sauce. Um, 
yeah, besides that, uh, just kind of a little bit of delay trails, a little bit of reverb, and it has this nice clean sound. And then if you really want to do any loud intros, kind of have this nice extra dry sound. about covers it. I uh, have a couple more reverb settings. This is one I wanted to show you. In between songs sometimes I'll switch over to playing more of a pad to make a really nice transition between songs. I'll switch to the new key uh, and go ahead and come in with a big pad swell. Uh, usually, typically in the past, I just had kind of this big sky setting called Stay With Me. I think it's even one of the presets. And I set the decay like all the way to 20 seconds. So check, this is crazy. So uh, say you're playing, say the next song's in G. So you see, you get that huge pad swell, but then um, I found a really nice use to combine it with uh, the warp setting. There's a nice subtle warp setting on the hologram that I was tweaking with and saved as a preset. Uh, by itself, this is sort of what that sounds like. So you get those little kind of twinkles around on the top, but uh, if you combine the two, I've been finding it's really nice. Yeah, it's really nice. It almost sounds like there's a track running in the background because it adds this little, you almost can't predict what it's going to do sometimes, which is sort of crazy. But uh, if you do have this pedal, if you um, give it a little bit of this space, the reverb, it'll kind of smooth some of that out. Also dialing back the filter will take off some of those highs. Uh, that way, whatever it does, even if it's nutty, uh, it, it'll sort of blend in with the, the pad swell a little bit better. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Uh, please feel free to send this around to someone that you know that plays guitar if they need a little inspiration for changing up their board. Uh, otherwise, I put all the links to everything on the board down in the description. And uh, thank you so much. I hope to see you next time.